I want to talk to you about the private war of a saint. The private war of a saint. Now, when I, when I, when I call him a saint, when I say saint, I'm not talking about somebody that is a recluse that's hiding away for 50 years and not in the public eye. No, this is a Christian. It's a believer who is walking in the fullness of Christ's love and uh, we are all saints, according to Paul the Apostle. Those who love Christ and walk with him are called saints. The private war of a saint. Now, Heavenly Father, we ask you to come and speak in a very special way. There are many private wars going on, even now while I speak. There are private wars among the saints of God here. And Holy Spirit, you have spoken to my heart. And you have given me something from your heart. And I ask you, Lord, to give me the strength and give me the anointing to convey it to this crowd, this congregation. Lord, without the anointing of the Spirit, I can't preach it and we can't hear it. So we ask you to come, Holy Spirit, right now. I honor you and I say, take my voice, take my mind and soul and spirit and speak your word to our hearts so that we walk out of here encouraged and changed. In Christ's name I pray, amen. In the 12th chapter of Revelation, we're told that Satan's going to rise up on the last day and declare war on the remnant, the holy remnant. This is a war Satan is, going, is now engaging in against the church of Jesus Christ and against the body of Christ. That includes those in China, Africa, uh, South America, North America, all over the world. There's a war. And you and I are involved in what we have termed spiritual warfare. Now, this spiritual warfare can uh, manifest itself in many ways. It's, it's Islam in many countries, fighting against the, the Christian way of life, fighting against uh, the, the revelation and testimony of Jesus Christ himself. When, when you go to Europe, it's secularism. This is the... the warfare that Satan is waging against the church of Jesus Christ. A recent survey said that in Sweden, only 20% of the population now believes in God. 80% do not believe in God. Secularism and apostasy. You go to England, you'll find apostasy. You'll find it all through Europe. Europe is in great dire need of a shaking. And, and not just the United States. In the United States, the, the warfare against the church has to do with, with uh, madness for pleasure and sensuality and prosperity. And gold has become the idol. And, and these are principalities and powers of darkness that seem to be moving into every institution. The principalities and powers of darkness, this war that's being raged, and believe me, all, all but one candidate on the Democratic side, I don't know yet about where all the Republicans stand, but even they, those candidates are for gay marriage. And it seems like though this, this war has developed in that there's, there seems to be a boasting in this uh, area of principalities and powers that are moving into positions of power in our institutions and agencies and even into church denominations. When, when you have the leader of the Episcopalian Church here in the United States uh, advocating gay marriage and uh, ordaining a gay bishop, and you, you see this almost this mockery. You, you, you see this uh, the pride that we're going to win this war, that, that we're going to move into power, and they're doing that. You can be sure that any, anyone who gets into power now in the presidency and many in Congress, we are headed for gay marriage. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. And now in our schools teaching that homosexuality is the right way, and teenagers are being taught in some of our schools now to try it even in grade schools. And you, 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 you see them in these principalities and powers working through people, uh, 
putting out their chest and saying, we are in power, we're in your face. But folks, the Bible says our weapons are not carnal, but mighty through God in tearing down strongholds. And the apostle said, we don't war that kind of war. We don't do that. We war through prayer. We war through our knees. We don't have to have a machete in our hand. We don't have to lop off somebody's head or somebody's arm. Our power is not those carnal weapons. Glory be to God. Now we know who's going to win this war. I said we know how this war comes out. Mighty through God in pulling down strongholds and principalities and powers. But you see, there's another war, and this is the war I want to concentrate on this morning. And that's the private war to individual children of God. Individual private wars. The writers of Ecclesiastes said, there's a time for war, and there's a time for peace. Now, you may be enjoying a time of peace right now. The joy of the Lord is flooded in your soul. Your problems, uh, many of them have been solved or God has answered prayer. And you're in that time. There's a time for rejoicing, a time for peace. And I trust that many of you are there. But I also said there's a time of war. And that war, that private war will come to you if you're not already in it. And many of you sitting here listening to me. Right now, you have been enduring and you are in the middle, engaged in a spiritual warfare private that nobody else knows about. Nobody else can share. You can't tell anybody because it's so deep and they wouldn't understand or they might judge you. And, and, for example, I, I talk to Gwen and, and sometimes I see the pain etched in her face and I want her to talk to me and, and I, I say, Honey, would you please tell me what's going on because I want to pray with you. I want to hold you up, and she, she says so often, David, this is my silent war. I can't tell you. And I said, why not? She said, I, I, I just can't explain. It's so deep. Have you ever been there? Have, have you ever gone through something where uh, affliction after adversity, after affliction, after trouble, after trial, comes heaped one after another? And it doesn't seem to stop, whether it's financial, children, grandchildren, friends. Come on now. I'm not speaking into the air. I'm not talking over your head. Many of you know what I'm talking about. You're in that private battle right now. These are wars of the flesh. My son, Greg, who went through this two and a half years of hell on earth with pain that no medication could touch. Thank God he's had his operation and he's doing fine and gaining strength every day. But I remember going to visit him at times when he wanted to take his life. He was in doctors say that's what happens with the kind of situation he had. And I said, Greg, I can only imagine what you're going through. And he says, no, 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 dad, you can't. You can't imagine it. Because you see, I couldn't reach him, his wife couldn't reach him, his children couldn't reach him, counselors couldn't reach him, because there's something going on there between him and God. There's something going on that is so deep and so painful, he doesn't have words. I believe that some of you could not sit down with any pastor or with me and try to probe the depths of what you're going through. You've already gone through the questions, why God, you're beyond that. That's what happened to Greg. He's beyond. He's, I don't ask why anymore. He said, that's, that's it. I just want one hour free of pain. I would just like to be able to see and, 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 and get some kind of relief from what I'm going through, this war that I'm in. You see, there are war zones and there are bloody battlefields. And, and, and in that time, you don't want a song. You don't need a sermon. You don't need a Holy Ghost meeting where you, you, you just get primed and pumped and then go out and the, as soon as you get on the street or get in your car, it's there. Now I know what that's like to be in a private warfare and sit in this seat and hurting, usually over someone else's pain near to me, and, and 
so overwhelmed by it, and everybody singing, uh, uh, shake off those heavy bands. Lay your burdens down. And I'm, I'm saying, well, I, I don't feel like it. I, I, I'm not getting into the meeting, and I'm not hearing the message. I know I'm hearing a powerful message from some pastor, and, and he's preaching with fire on truth and building my faith, and, and I walk out saying, I'm the same. I'm still in the battle. You see, we try to grit our teeth and say, hey, I can fight this, and we put on this facade, and we say everything is all right, and it, it's not. And God doesn't want you to cheat like that. God doesn't want you to put on a front. God is, has sympathy when you're in these times. He knows what you're going through, but this is between you and God. It's between you and Jesus, and nobody else can help. I know what it was for three days when my daughter Bonnie, who's here this morning, was in a hospital, cancer, and for three days in a room, shut in, in a hospital room, <clears throat> nobody could go in except with leaded suit, a leaded uh, vest, no food, and cobalt beaming into her body for three days and nights. And Gwen is in the hall, pounding her wall on the fist, her fist on the wall. And I couldn't take it. I was so overwhelmed and so shocked. I got in my car and I've told this story. I went out in the country and for two hours just screamed at God. I said, God, Gwen, all her cancers, and then Debbie, and now Bonnie, what did I do? And, and uh, why this constant barrage of, of pain and agony? And I, I, I know what it is to, to not be able, if you'd have seen me and talked to me on that road uh, in El Paso, I, you couldn't get me. I don't care if there were a thousand saints standing there praying for me. I don't care if they were saying, Brother Dave, uh, hold on, you're going to make it through. Uh, and, and don't say things that wound God's heart. And, and, and don't scream at God. And nothing would have touched me because I was in a private war. Because God had to do something in my heart. There was something God had to do in me. Man can't do it. Sometimes counselors can't reach it. They can't get through to you. You can hear all the preaching. You can hear all of that. But God has to do something supernatural for you. For you. I thank God he met me on that day. And God said... You, your daughter has two fathers, you and me. Which one knows what's best? I said, you do. He said, you've got two fathers. Which one of, her can, one of us can hold Bonnie now in that room? I said, you can. And Lord said, you put your family in my hands and you trust me. And you just hold steady. I'm not mad at you. Get it out of your system. Cry it out. And then just put them all in my hands and I'll do what's right. Just trust that I'm a father to you. And while Gwen was in the hall praying, and I'm out getting a victory there just between me and God, Jesus moved into Bonnie's room for three days and held her fast. She's here today, and she could tell you that. Oh, yes, private wars. Some of us face a private war that's caused what the Bible calls a season of heaviness, who are kept Paul said, we are kept by the power of God through faith to salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness through many adversities, temptations or adversities. He said, and Paul said, I, I know you're rejoicing. I know you have a rejoicing heart. We know you love God, but there are going to be times of adversity and heaviness and the original, it says times of dejection, times of downness, times of absolute depression. And, and he said, for a season, if need be, it's this waking up every day in another battle. Finances, the nav financial problems that never seem to end. I got a letter from a pastor this week, and he said, Pastor Dave, I've got... 
three children and I, I've got financial problems. There's no money coming in. And, and he said, I, I actually sat in a room recently and was so angry because I have prayed and I have fasted. I've done everything and this battle never ends for me. And then at the end of the, toward the end of the letter, he said, I just got your newsletter. And you were talking about the very thing. He said, it's like you were sitting in a room and the Holy Spirit lifted the burden. He said, I still have the need, but I know I have a Heavenly Father who cares. <laughs> See, this is a day-to-day -day battle. David said, my soul melts because of my heaviness. What he's really saying, I'm worn out. Come on. Straight talk. Some of you who love God so dearly, you love people and help people and, and do what is right before God, but you're weary, you're down, you're just tired of the battle. Because of heaviness, this is your private war. And then, then to go a little further, there are private wars, according to Scripture, that result from the lust that war in our members. Lust that war in our members that bring us to a private, terrible warfare in the soul. I was reading this past week a few chapters from a famous book written many years ago. It's about a, the private war of a very godly saint. Two chapters in particular. He was greatly admired, a very righteous man, charitable man. He'd served the Lord faithfully for many, many years. He was an intercessor, a man of integrity and honesty. He loved God's word. He was a worshiper, and even his enemies acknowledged his righteousness, a very, very godly, righteous man. But one day his world came tumbling down because in a moment of weakness, he impregnated another man's wife. And in his panic, he made sure that a, he, he made arrangements for a hitman to kill her husband. And one day his world came crashing down over his head, and he describes the, in vivid, vivid detail his horrible private war. He was stricken with a disease, his friends forsook him. His sons turned on him. His soul was flooded. I'm reading some of his very words. His soul was flooded with grief and bitter tears. He couldn't sleep at night. The guilt was unbearable. He came under the chastening rod of God. He said, my burden is intolerable. My sins have caught up with me. My body is racked with pain. My bones ache. I have great pain in my back and every part of my body been overcome with shame for having reproached God's name. I've been a fool. I've been a hypocrite. He said, all I do now is groan. The mental anguish causes me to mourn from morning to night. I'm depressed. And I've thought that God now has forsaken me. I have my own war. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My sins have overwhelmed me. I am totally abandoned. Now by you time, by this time you know the book is the Bible, and the man is Paul, or, or David. I just told you, life, David, and if you go to Psalms 38 and 69, you'll read those two chapters I referred to when I started on it. David had sinned and, and actually caused the enemy to become the hitman to destroy Uriah. Now, I, I bring this to your attention because this, this war that's going on against the church of Jesus Christ and against the saints of God. It, it, it comes down to not just the weariness of life and the heaviness. It comes from an attack. Paul the Apostle talked about this lust attack that's coming, that has come and is coming and is here now against this, this lust warfare, this enticement out of the very pits of hell against God's holiest people. From whence comes wars and fightings among you? 
Come they not even hence from your lusts that war in your members. Paul says, or the scripture says, Paul said, take heed when you think you stand, lest you fall. Because you see, we, we have a concept that if you're godly, you're praying person, and you truly love the Lord, that you cannot be tempted. That, that you will never be enticed. But I feel led of the Holy Spirit to, to just, I'm going to do this quickly, but I have to bring it as I feel the Holy Spirit would lead me now. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and my heart goes out to those on the jobs, those who are being enticed on their jobs. And this, the Holy Spirit spoken clearly to me, not to judge anybody here, but some of you listening to me, you're in your own private war because the enemy has tried to bring some kind of an attraction on the job. Sometimes it can happen in the church of Jesus Christ. And my heart goes out to those because the battle I just talked to you about is the battle of those who love Jesus and have, have, have some kind of a thing going on in their heart, uh, looking not with lust, but being enticed in just a little bit uh, responding, not rejecting, not standing strong in the spirit and resisting the enemy. He's going to come in like a flood. He's going to come on the job. Many of you know what I'm talking about. People coming on at you. Men, women, and young people, especially their friends. I spoke to the young people Friday night. Then all week I was saying, what do I preach to these young people? And, and the Lord gave me one word, responsibility. The responsibility to choose who you walk with, your friends. And we have Christians in this church, and I say it with heartbroken love and compassion. And I'll not rail on you. But you see, 90% given to God, 90% to Christ, but there's something holding back. There's a 10% something they're holding back, and it's because of friends. Friends that are not walking with God and an and, and unwillingness to give up. So, so wanting God, but then never able to give up. There's something holding back. And the Lord in His grace wants to... Open your heart to that so that he can lovingly restore you and just say, wake up, be careful. Because this is what David said. This is the battle that is sleepless nights, guilt, condemnation, fear. David said, my Lord, my God teaches me how to war. Now, there is a way to fight to victory in your private war. Now, I, I don't have a formula. I don't have a list of things to do. But I look at David's life and how he came through to glorious victory. And I want to share this with you. Because if you're in a, in a private war right now, whether it's the heaviness, whether it's financial, whether it's a lust situation, whatever it may be, there's a way to victory. Did you hear what I said? There is a way to victory. God does not want you to go on in this. If you're having a problem of some kind of addiction, some kind of a problem, a difficulty, the Lord has an answer. During the service, a young man came down and knelt here, and I asked him to come backstage, and his name is Timothy, and he's here listening to me now. And, and a wonderful young man, and the reason he came up here, he said he has a war going on in his heart. He said, I want to do right, and I don't know how. And because I don't know how, I'm confused. I don't know my way out. He, he prayed, and he's given his heart to Jesus. And, and he, he, he said, how do I find the way? I'm confused. Let's look at what David did. First of all, David cried out in, in agony. And this is the cry, many of us cry. Oh God, make haste, hurry up, deliver me, help quickly, cause me to escape because I'm about to fall. Oh God, make haste. You have given your word to deliver me, so now do it. And I have prayed that prayer and you have prayed it. My God, deliver me, bring me out of this. And God hears, he understands that cry. 
God, where is your way of escape? You see, we want out of the warfare. We don't want to fight anymore. You say, I've, I've fought long enough and I'm weary and I'm about to fall. That was David's word. And that's the, the we do that by nature. That's, that's, and, and God understands that. He'll not judge you for that. We're, 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 we're to cry. Even Christ in the garden said, the cross said, Father, why have you forsaken me? So this is not the issue. But you see, God doesn't want to take you out of your battle right now. And listen closely because I received this from the Holy Spirit. You can't be taken out of the battle because you're going through what you're going through because of your walk, because of what you have asked God to do in you. And there is no other way. And so many people depend on your strength. If you're an intercessor, for example, you can't be taken out of a battle. You have to, because God keeps you in the warfare to harden you as a soldier, in your heart and your spirit, so that those around you, if he takes you out, people are going to fall all around you because you are the center of the warfare because you had a heart for God and you don't understand it. You're thinking the devil is trying to defeat you and bring you down. And yes, he is there to battle against you and God allows this, but you can't be taken. There's some of you now more in in greater intensity of private war than anybody in this house. But you see, God can't take you out because he's got nobody else for those that are fighting around you and looking to you and looking for your strength. They trust in God, but they're weak. There are weak Christians, the Bible said. There are those that need to depend. There are those that need crutches for a while until God heals the spirit. And so... Say, Jesus, give me the grace. Give me the strength to endure. David made a decision. Live or die, I'm going to magnify the Lord in my battle. I'm going to magnify the Lord in this. Now, you see, David said, well, I pray that God get me out of this, and God didn't take me out of it, so I'm going to just, while I'm in this fight, while I'm in this war, I'm going to magnify and praise God in spite of everything I'm going through. David said, Psalm 70, verse 4, let God be magnified. Psalm 34, 3, I magnify the Lord. Come magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Psalm 40, 16, stay, say often, continuously, God be magnified. God be magnified in this. I called Greg yesterday, the son with the back healing. <clears throat> and I said, what's happening? He said, Dad, you see, I thank God for my healing. I thank God that I have no pain. But the Lord's showing me something. God doesn't want to just take me out of pain. He doesn't want me just to be a testimony. You, you see, uh, Israel cried ten times, God, get me out of this. They were in deep trials, and, and, and God delivered them ten times, and they still complained. They still didn't get it. You see, God can pull you out of everything you're in right now, but God, that's not God's goal. The Lord's goal is not just to get you out of one crisis and say boy you don't know what I, I i've been delivered god has healed me but did you come out of it totally dependent on christ did you come out of it totally dependent saying live or die i'm the lord's and i know i'm going to face more things but am i drawing nigh to christ or has it made you more christ-like has it made you more compassionate toward people you see, he wants more than that. It's not just being delivered out of the Red Sea. It's to go on in to the fullness and the rest. They were to go into the rest until your soul is at rest. God's delivered me, yes. And I'm at peace. And I trusted God. But I know there's another battle coming. And it may get worse. And I'm going to set my heart to trust God through it. You set your heart before it comes. You set your heart in good times. In times of peace, you set your mind. I'm going to trust God through this. Finally, the great <clears throat> lesson 
that David learned is that faith must believe that my distress will not overwhelm me. My problems will not take me down. Oh, glory be to God. Will you get this, saints? Will you hear it if you hear nothing else from me this morning? It, it, it is to, to look at all around you, all your fears, all your distresses, all your anxieties, all of, all of your adversities, everything around, and, and, and be able to say by faith, by God's grace, I'm not going down. I will not be overwhelmed by these things because that's the fear the devil wants to put into your heart that suddenly your, your faith is going to fail, suddenly that you're going to just give up and quit. No, you're not going to quit because you have a Holy Ghost living in you, you have the Holy Spirit living in you, and He will quicken you by His Spirit. And there has to be something that rises up in your heart and say, no, I'm going to fight through the power of His Holy Spirit. Escaping and getting out of storms is not the final issue with, the law, with, with God. Now I, I come to the most important part of my message in closing. Paul the Apostle says a, there was a messenger Satan sent to harass me and to bombard me and really in the original Greek is to pound with a fist and he said I prayed three times and the Lord said no I'm going to allow this because uh, I have enough grace for you and I'll give you abundant grace to cope with it and he had that all his life I don't know what it is it, it could be oftentimes I think that his his messenger of Satan was the hounding of his mind of all the saints that he destroyed and ruined and cast into prison and their faces and their cries all coming to him and, and the enemy just shouting at him, you, you phony, you hypocrite, and, and never letting those cries uh, vanish out of his mind. I don't know that speculation, but I feel that often. <clears throat> Because if it were his, just his eyes, he wouldn't have been able to write these letters in dark prisons. And there's so many other things that point to that. But I, I believe that the devil sends uh, the principalities and powers of darkness assign lying spirits to those who walk close to God. I know that. I know that I know that I have been assigned, not because I'm holy, not because I'm somebody special, not at all. But I know I know him. I know God. And I know that there has been an assignment on my life for a number of years that I have fought. That lying spirit, they work from the atmosphere because there is a prince of the air, the scripture says. Prince of powers and powers who rule in the air, the atmosphere. And they will come, they will be sent on assignment, and they will stay with you night and day, so that in the middle of the night, wake up through the day, and there will be these lies that come. Now, you see, I know that I have the mind of Christ in me. I know that he's given me a renewed heart. I know my love for God. And I don't fear that, I never question, I, 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 have, I have total confidence in my covenant walk with Jesus Christ. But I also know, that when I walk the streets, when I walk to church, when I leave the church, when I get up to preach, I'll hear a lie from the devil that says, you're just a hypocrite. You don't have the anointing. These things will come at you. But, but you see, I know who he is. I, I know what it is. I know that that's not out of my mind. My mind is cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I, I know who I am in Christ. But you see, I don't, I'm not afraid of those voices anymore. I'm not afraid. I say, devil, I know where that's coming from. And you're just going to get tired one of these days and have to leave because I'm not going your way. I'm not listening to these lies. I am in Christ. I'm under the blood of Jesus. These lies, I, 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 I was 
taking Gwen to the hospital last week, and Dell said, uh, you better make funeral arrangements. I began to weep. I said, wait a minute. God wouldn't do, God's not going to lie to me right now. There's, 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 there's no, but see, he'll come as, as the voice of an angel. He'll, he, 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 this is God. Folks, the only voice you to listen to is this book right here, right here. You get this in your heart. You know, you know what I do with this? I close. I, I may publish this book called My Favorite Faith Building Bible Verses. And there's, there's about 100 right now, and I'm going to increase it to about 200. And I have it in a, in a notebook by my desk in my study. And when those lying words come to me, I get those promises out, and I read. I'll read 50 of them. And by the time I get to number 10 and number 12, I said, devil, you are a liar. You are a liar. This is what Jesus did. The devil quoted scriptures and came into his, a voice came and said, throw yourself down from the temple. And the Lord Jesus went to the word. Folks, this is the sure voice. This is the sure, unshakable voice of the Lord. So get your Bibles out. Get your promises out. Glory to God. We have victory in Jesus Christ. I, 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 I was looking, just opened the Bible recently, and it, it says, He causes all wars to cease. He causes all wars to cease. Will you stand and just lift your hands and give God praise? Lift up your hands to the Lord and, and say, Lord, I love you. I thank you that in my battle, you're going to see me through. I'm going to believe you. I'm going to trust you through this. Come what may. And I'm going to praise you even now. Lord, we praise you. We worship you and give you thanks for your faithfulness, your goodness, your mercy. Glory to God. Now, I didn't preach a long message, but I hope you heard something from God. All, all applause in this church goes to the Heavenly Father, not to man. We know better than that. It goes to our Heavenly Father. I believe God wants to lift those. He, he wants you to just cast yourself on his care, just like I did on that lonely road in El Paso, Texas. I just threw myself. I said, here, Lord. But I said, Lord, if I walk with you, you have to walk with me. You have to make known to me. I, I can't just hear those words, well, the Spirit will give you power. Lord, it has to be real. You have to come and manifest that power. I've, I've got to see, and, and he'll give you evidence of that power. You'll find that even in your most vicious battle, that the Lord will move. You, just, you may not even be praying, but you just feel a peace coming. There'll be a rest come from the Holy Spirit. And that's the Lord answering that. That's the Holy Spirit giving you strength. He strengthens through peace and rest. The Holy Spirit has come to bring us into rest. So some of your troubled minds, God bless your heart, lay it down. If you're in a lust problem, the Lord's not turned you away. He's not turned you away. He wants you to come to his grace. And he wants to, first of all, he convicts you. He just say a loving word to you. He'll, he'll point a loving finger at you and say, be careful. And then he, he comes with his healing grace. If you're here this morning in the, in the annex or here in the main auditorium, and you want somebody to stand with you in prayer, you're going through your war. You have a private war. 
Would you bow your heads? I feel the Holy Spirit saying something here. Lord, speak your mind. Lord, I don't know who's here. I don't know who walked in here. But Lord, this, this is life and death. This is so important that, that some not walk out of this building with this war still raging. Lord, that they come and say, I come to you, Jesus, because I need faith. Restore, and like the man says, forgive my unbelief. But he's saying, Lord, replace it with faith to see me through. Lord, for those with financial terror, it, it's, there's no other word can explain it. They're terrified because the finances go deeper and deeper. God, I'm asking for miracles today. First of all, that we would rest and believe that God somehow, in some way, in some mysterious way, things we can't understand, in ways we don't know, that God will see us through. He said, you'll never let your seed beg for bread, and you are faithful. For those, Lord, that have a sickness, a disease, maybe cancer, whatever it may be, and what a war it's been. It's been a private war. And those that are here suffering pain, they live every day with pain. We have people in the choir. We have people all over hearing me right now living in constant pain. Oh, God, will you come now with assurance that there's a Heavenly Father focused right on the need. If you're here and you need prayer, I want you to step out and we'll believe the Lord right now. You walk out here, just walk out of your seat, wherever you're at, the balcony, go the stairs on either side. And in the annex, I believe there's probably room, you can come down. The ushers in the lobby there will show you how to get here to the main auditorium. You can walk down the aisle and, and join us and we will stand together and believe God for America. If you don't know Christ, if, or if you've backslid, you've turned away from the Lord, you're drifting, why don't you just obey the Holy Spirit if he's tugging at your heart and follow these that are coming, and let's believe the Lord. Will you come and move in tight, if you will, please? Move in close so that make room for these that are coming. David, the psalmist, said, The Lord is merciful and gracious. He is slow to anger plenteous in mercy he will not always chide you neither will he keep his anger forever he has not dealt with you according to your sins he's not rewarded us according to our iniquities for as the heaven is high above the earth so great is his mercy toward them that fear him as far as the east is from the west so far has he removed our sins from us like as a father pities his children so the Lord pities them that fear him. Now listen to this again. Like as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them that fear him. He knows our frame. He, he remembers that we're just dust. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children. What a God we serve. What a loving, merciful God we serve. You heard what it said, God sympathizes, he pities, and you, you can be sure he's not going to sympathize with you and see your need and then walk away. This means that he's come to your rescue. He's come to, to, to intervene. I'm not going to ask you to pray, God, just get you out of the trouble right now that God will lift you above it and bring you to a place of rest. And when you're at rest, then you are capable to receive the faith that he wants to instill in you. It's hard for God to break through the wall of despair. He, he comes, now he can do it, but there has to be a cry. You've had that cry in your heart. You've had that for quite a while. And I know that I know God wants you to walk out of this building after this service with a measure of peace like you've not known, a measure of rest like you've not experienced for a long, long time. Pray this with me. Lord Jesus, I know you love me. I know you will do what is best for me. You've seen my struggle. You've seen my war. And you know every detail. 
and you know what to do about it. Will you cleanse me, Jesus? Cleanse me of all iniquity. I come to your mercy for cleansing, forgiveness, and I ask you to send the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Give me confidence and faith that God rejoices in me. God delights in me. David said, and I say, his mercy and his gladness has made me whole. Now I receive it in Jesus' name. Confidence, faith, and hope that God is giving me rest and peace according to his promise. Now let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we lay hold of your promises. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. You will do that, Lord. Let the peace of God come like a flood. Lord, just pour rain of peace upon this people right now. Everyone within the sound of my voice, let peace reign and let God be magnified. Let God be praised. Oh, come on, folks. Let's praise him and thank him for his goodness. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory to your holy name. We worship you and we praise you.